this section here, I've decided not to hold you accountable to know the name. So whether it's like consistent or inconsistent or something independent, or you don't need to know the names, fair enough? Nope. But here's the point. What we've been doing this whole chapter is getting equations for a couple of lines, and the holy grail is this right there. You know, the spot where they meet. What's the point x, y that fits both equations? The equation for the line that's going up and the one that's more horizontal in my drawing. Fair enough? So now we're getting this thing, which is like solving special systems. So, so like a special system is going to be something that doesn't look like that, doesn't nicely have this one point where they meet. Yes? So what would be some options that we could have? Well, one option is going to be like this kind of thing here. But our like special things are things that are weird. I have two ways that they could be different than that. Somebody feeling smart? Hook us up. Oh, come on. OK. I have one smart. Oh, I heard a <gasps> we go with her first or go for it, Trevor? Like ways to solve them? Oh, no, just, just lines that aren't going to meet like that. Parallel lines. Parallel lines. So if we have parallel lines, <laughs> so these here, which I'm guessing was the, <gasps> yep, if we have parallel lines like this, look at my two beautiful parallel lines. How many solutions do those have? Zero solutions, right? There's no points that they have in common. Or they're really thinking outside the box. There's only one line. Yes and no. Technically, here's one line. And I'm drawing the second line right on top of it. So you're right. Yeah, parallel lines, but they're the exact same line. Because now how many solutions does this one have? Yeah. Infinite. Because like right here is a solution. Right there is a solution. Right there is a solution. There's a solution. In between those two is a solution. So this has infinite. Infinite solutions. Good? So inconsistent systems, that's going to be that one that we just did there for like the number two example. So inconsistent have no solutions. Or you could write zero solutions or something like that if you wanted to. So I'm going to try to draw a little picture of it here. That's my second bullet point. I'm just going to try to draw like two parallel lines. So parallel lines dash no intersection. Good. Now the question is, as we go through and work through like this one down here to try to solve it, how are we going to know that it's parallel lines that there's no solution? And essentially, when you go through and solve it, you're going to get a number equals a different number. Should we quick go through this example, kind of review for the quiz, or should I just kind of, well, copy it, don't copy it. I'm going to try to make my X's cancel out. I'm just going to try to go super quick. You might want to just watch and, and not bother doing the whole thing. But I'm going to times a negative 2 so I can add to get them to cancel out. E equals negative 24. And if you see me make a mistake, please say something. But we're down to there. Fair enough? And now when I take and add them together, I have 0 X's. I have 0 Y's. Do you agree the left side just has nothing left? But the right side is 2. Do you agree 0 does not equal 2? Never ever does 0 equal 2. So it doesn't matter what I pick for x and y. No matter what I put in there, I'm not going to get something that works because they just drop out. So as soon as you go through and solve one of these and get like a 0 equals 2 or a 0 equals 4 or even like a 5 equals negative 17, if that could happen, um, number equals a different number, parallel lines, they never meet, there's no solutions. Good? Officially, the name for that is that it's an inconsistent system, but you don't need to know the name as far as I'm concerned. Fair enough? Cool. All right, so consistent systems, this is where we're going to have two types. So the, the page we just, all right, so consistent systems, two types. Uh, the first type is going to be this consistent and independent. That's what we've been doing for a long time. So uh, exactly one solution, or I'll just say one solution. In other words, these two lines are only going to cross in one spot, or those two equations only have one xy pair that fits both equations. But one solution, it's going to be that point right there where they cross. Yes? And my third bullet point, if you want to put it in, is I'm going to say, like all questions from 6.1 to 6.3. So all the questions you've been doing so far technically are consistent and independent. Um, you get one solution. Fair? Fair. 
So I figure don't work through one like that because you have a lot of practice with those. Actually, consistent and dependent. So this is going to be when you have two equations for the same line. Or you draw a line, and then you pretend to draw another line right on top of it, like I'm doing. And I'm going to put a little arrow to it and say all the points on the lines, because there's two of them there, <coughs> are solutions. Because those two lines overlap with each other at every single point on the two lines. So then we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. So now the question is, when we take and solve this bad boy down here, the ones that were parallel lines that didn't cross gave us a number equals a different number. Anyone have thoughts for this one? Number equals the same. Yep. It, this one is just going to be a number equals the same number. So if you wanted to, you could say, like, it's going to be 5 equals 5 or 0 equals 0 or something like that. Um, so I'm going to take and just copy down my top one. You're welcome to just watch because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I figure it's worth a quick, quick do this. I'm going to multiply by negative 2 again so I can add them at the end. So I like adding more than I like subtracting them. Now when I take and add these two together, 6x plus a negative 6x just gives me 0x's, 8x plus a negative 8y, 8y minus 8y just drops out, so I have a 0, 14 plus negative 14 equals 0. So then you know, you just write down infinitely many solutions. Or if you get that first one that we did, you'd write down 0 solutions. Questions at all? A final comment. In the homework, a lot of them are easier to solve with substitution instead of linear combination. So just kind of look and see how it ends up. You know, do you get a 0 equals 0 or a 0 equals some other number? And use that to figure out what to do or which type of solution it is. And some of them are kind of nasty looking too. Just remember your algebra and just attack them. Bring them to their knees. You can do it.